Well, hello there, Gemini. How are you? It is so good to see you again. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today we're doing your mid-March reading. So this is good, really, from now until about mid-April. We'll take a look at the overall energy with the oracle cards, and then we'll move to the tarot for more details about any obstacles on your path or areas of resistance, and of course, advice from the divine. So we'll take a look at all of this. Let's get started. We're first going to take a look at um, your soul travelers card and animal spirit card to get a sense of the energy over the next month so you have passion and pleasure and savor your life this is very much like fifth house you know really reactivating the divine feminine within you um and you know getting back to doing those things that you really enjoy finding more pleasure even in your work or in your relationships you know this is such an expansive energy of really really kind of like allowing yourself to move away perhaps from being um, concentrating on the tangible, the, the things that we can touch, our pentacles and the things that we own, and really trying to get more into your heart, experiencing, having a sense of wanting to experience new things that bring you joy in your life. And then scared beetle spirit, magic works through you. Look at how amazing this energy is, almost like on fire, right? <laughs> With all that orange definitely uh sacral chakra second chakra coming into um alignment here you know just like a burst of energy i feel like you're having a big inspiration now we do have um the new uh i'm sorry the full moon in libra and a lunar eclipse on march 25th that is just next week right this is the energy of you know things coming to light understanding getting maybe a little bit of clarity about what it is that you would like to experience I feel like for some of you there's something that's leaving your life um because your your resistance here your obstacle is loss there's something that's leaving your life now it's kind of it's not it doesn't necessarily have to be a relationship or a job or something like that. It, to me, this is more of an energy of helping something coming along to help you to clear out any mindsets, negative mindsets about things will not work out for you or work is hard, right? Um, or you may never find love. This is almost like like maybe an epiphany or something that is occurring here. Yes, this is, it's about love. <laughs> okay, you have divine love and love. And I'm not saying that has to be a romantic partner, but you have, look at this, all of this energy around relationships, about opening up your heart to new people, to new relationships, to new joys, new passions in your life, perhaps even like um, new hobbies, new places to travel, just this sense of like perhaps feeling as if, yeah, you are definitely, oh my gosh, this is major. <laughs> so this is the energy of understanding I, I've been working so hard. Some of you may have felt like you you kind of like almost like put yourself in this bubble where where your life is centered around your work or centered around healing, right? It's it's this energy of you've been in a little bit of a bubble and it's kind of like you've come to the end of that. Um, but there is this energy of understanding. See, here's your obstacle, your area of resistance is that something is ending in your life. But I feel like it's not necessarily like a relationship or a job. It's not like that tower moment. In other words, I feel like this is more of an a, like an epiphany of I want to enjoy life more. I want to have experiences of love, of passion, of joy, of dancing in the moonlight, right? It's kind of like, why am I working so hard? It's almost like that you could be having a little bit of an existential I'm not going to say crisis, but oh, awareness, right? Of why why am I working so hard when there's so much out there to experience? For some of you, you could even have a little bit of um, 
a drama going on your in your life, you know, in some type of family situation or relationship or work, there's a little bit of drama. And it's kind of like, I feel like if you are experiencing that, it's kind of like bringing this to highlight. Like, why am I putting so much time and energy into that when there's so much out there that I could experience that is so joyful? Why? It's almost like this energy where you, you you could be trying to fix something or get something to work or something and you're you're just like okay this I, I'm hyper focusing on trying to fix something. In other words, I want to go and just enjoy life for a while. I want to put the drama to the side. I want to put the struggles to the side. But understanding that a lot of that is because of your own mindset. So <laughs> when we're kind of like focusing perhaps on the negative of a relationship, a job, life itself, right? When we're focusing on the negative part of it, that's what we get more of. When we allow ourselves to start focusing on the passions, the things that are working well in your life, or those, or starting to take steps towards bringing in the things that will bring you more joy, all of a sudden, it's like the magic happens. It's a big switch. I actually believe that it's almost like a switch. You, you could actually find yourself saying something to somebody and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I see the light. Like, I, I don't want to deal with this drama anymore. I'm allowing myself to move into other areas because here's your present energy, understanding that you do deserve divine love, right? It's understanding it's time to step into a new world, that the world that you have been living in or focusing on, okay? And here you have intuition, the angels of the four directions and the hierophant, okay? So this could have to do with family. It could have to do with traditional thinking, okay? Especially now that Pluto has moved into Aquarius. It could have to do with a romantic connection or a marriage. It's kind of like allowing yourself to see. I feel like your intuition for some time has been telling you that this path or this mindset, it's really to me, it's more like a, a sense of a mindset or the perspective that you're seeing a situation in, right? It's kind of like allowing yourself to say, oh my gosh, like, why am I putting so much time and energy into this? It's just draining me of my energy. It's time to move into another path. It's time to close the chapter on one way of seeing something. If nothing else, it's like ch closing the chapter on how you see it. You know, this is very much perhaps about rewriting a story that you have been telling yourself. It's a little bit about rewriting a story. For some of you, you may feel, if, especially if you have codependency issues, and a lot of empaths do, right? So it's just recognizing that you may have some relationship or your work or something like that, where you have this kind of like mindset that these people or this person needs you, right? Like, they won't be able to survive or go on if you're not there to help or you're not there to love them or you're not there to in the work environment, right? Because you're feeling a little bit like somebody or some group's glue, okay? <laughs> it's kind of like you're trying to be the glue. You could be trying to rescue it, whether it's just very subconsciously, right? But it's a mindset that I think you have had for a very, very long time, perhaps even since the day you were born. It's the energy of feeling like somebody or something can't survive without you. Now, this doesn't mean that you necessarily have to leave this person or this job. Here's the thing, you're changing your energy in that relationship or situation because there's a sense of feeling like you're making decisions to make this person happy or you're concerned, right, that something will happen if you're not there to pick up the pieces. But I feel as if what you're, you're seeing is that, that that's not really true. They may, okay, depending on the situation, they may get upset, right? Or things may start falling, falling through, <laughs> right? Not, it may not work as well if you're not there, Gemini, or you're not at least putting as much effort into this situation or relationship, right? But at the same time, 
this situation or relationship is draining you and not allowing you to experience life on your happy level. So it would be kind of like, I, I can totally resonate with this. So when I was a teacher, right, I was the person on the team. Um, there were four teachers on our team. And, you know, the other three were all married and had young children at home. And I was single, right, and had nobody, no uh, young children waiting for me at home, right? I, I would go home and I was by myself. So a lot of the times what I did was I did, I was the glue, right? I would do some of those things. I took on, I delegated a lot of the work to myself because I kind of felt like, well, I have to do this because the others uh, have little ones at home, right? And they were making choices of leaving school <laughs> at a reasonable time, right? They had different priorities in their life. And I felt like, well, this isn't fair to the students or to the parents or whoever. Like I took on this role of feeling like I had to um, fix it all, right? I had to, um, because I was single, because if I go home, well, what am I going to do, right? It doesn't matter. I might as well be here at school and take on all of the burdens of the other teachers too to make sure everything's running smoothly for the students, the school, the parents, everybody, right? But meanwhile, I didn't have time or energy to go and do some other things, you know? Um, and understanding that that leads to burnout. If you are starting to feel burnt out, the reason is, is because we get burnout when we're not listening to our divine feminine, right? Here's your intuition. That is very divine feminine energy. This is divine feminine energy. We all have divine feminine and divine masculine. When we stay in that masculine energy, feeling like we have to be the hero for other people or we have to you pick up the slack, <laughs> right, or whatever it is, it's we are doing that at an expense of our own divine feminine energy, our own ability to, to have self-care, self-love, to, to spend time on passions that are important to us. Yeah, this is you allowing yourself to find better balance, understanding. If you're feeling drained in your life, in, in relationships, or just drained in general, it's kind of like a little bit of a wake-up call. And I feel like you may be having an experience either in a, a relationship of some sort or a situation in your life where you recognize, oh my goodness, this is just draining me of being able to have the life that I want because you, Gemini, and it's just like me, I'm saying it to myself, look, I was pointing to myself, right? It's kind of like, because you recognize that it's your mindset that you feel as if you have to be the rescuer, okay, or the fixer in some situation. You're finding, what you're understanding is that you're finding value, okay, or you think your value is tied up to being the glue, the fixer, the, the solver, the rescuer, right? You're finding, you're thinking that your value is there, but that's not what your value is. Your value is your love, your light, your passions, your purpose, and allowing yourself to say, I, and it doesn't mean you have to walk away completely from this person or situation, but really putting in some healthy boundaries and not saying yes to this situation that so much so that it drains you. You know, for me being a teacher, to start leaving at a, a, at a normal time, right? Instead of being the last one in the building, right? Leaving when like the other teachers leave. And the problem is, is that one, I think, looking back on it, I resisted that because when I left, it kind of was a reminder that I'm single, right? And now, well, what am I going to do? I left school, so now what am I going to do? Part of this journey is perhaps you have been overgiving yourself so much <laughs> to other people and situations, you don't even know what it is that you enjoy. And therefore, it's another reason to resist. It's kind of like, okay, so, all right, now I have this free time. What am I going to do? That is part of this journey. 
is understanding, wow, what would you like to do? <laughs> and trying on some different things, like not feeling like you have to commit to something, but just trying different things, trying some art classes, music classes, dance classes, right? Going on some trips, whatever it is. It's kind of like, yeah, I want to expand my horizons. I want to have other experiences. Um, and that's what you're doing. You're, you're allowing yourself to see that you're out of balance. And I feel like for a lot of you, it is because of somebody that's trying to control you in your life, right? Whether that's a, a family relationship, a romantic relationship, or, or a, a, a boss, right? There's this energy of trying to please. I feel like you're trying to please somebody. And for various reasons, right? So it's kind of like you, you may be trying to please or make this person happy, but at the same time, you're recognizing that this is bringing you out of balance. Yeah, look at this. You have the Ten of Cups. It, you're confused about what your Ten of Cups is. It's time to kind of like say, okay, I'm going to go on a journey of figuring out what my passions are. And you, sometimes it's good to just start with the passions that you had when you were a child, right? <laughs> like start back there and just kind of like try different things. And you, you're a Gemini. You're so good at so many things. <laughs> so it's kind of like, don't feel like you have to, you know, go in and knock it out of the ballpark. It's just kind of like go and experience it. Okay, so your area of resistance or your obstacle is, yes, surrendering to this journey. Understanding that you are having to kind of walk away from a mindset it's really a mindset that is keeping you in a codependent type of energy in a certain relationship or situation there could be some guilt or shame or something underlying here but it's time to kind of like allow yourself to surrender to this and allow it to end it's kind of like shining a light on our fears right is the best way to kind of like say okay Yep. What's my, what's the worst case scenario? I pull my energy back from this relationship. What's going to happen? Yeah, they, they may, they may walk away, but are you going to spend the rest of your life trying to please somebody that you're never going to be able to please that with the five of pentacles here, this is somebody that's never going to be happy, no matter how much you give to the situation. So it's about building healthy boundaries and getting really crystal clear with yourself about what, how much time and energy you want to put into this situation. It's not about judging the other person or judging yourself. It's just kind of like sitting with it, looking at it and saying, okay, how much am I willing to give? How much am I willing to, to, um, to put into this situation without stepping into the energy of being the glue? Yeah, yeah, you're 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 allowing yourself to no longer be the glue, right? It's kind of like I'll, I want to be in this relationship, but when you're the glue, you're the one that's doing all the work. You're the one that's putting all the energy into the situation in order to hold the relationship together. What you're wanting is that this person, you're wanting this person to step up to the plate. The only way they'll step up to the plate and be equal with you, right, to, to find this equality in this relationship or situation is if you pull yours back because you're putting in all of the work, right? And they're just like coasting along. When you pull back your energy, then if they want the relationship, then you have to balance it out. Now, some of you might say, yeah, but they might walk away. But asking yourself, do you really want to just be in a relationship that's not, that's not equal? Do you, is that what you really want for yourself? And for so many of you, you have let go of so many people and situations. This could be one of the last, right? And allowing yourself to say, okay, it's not, once again, that you have to walk away. I feel like this is an energy of allowing yourself to set more better, healthier boundaries, right? And seeing, weighing it out, waiting it out <laughs> and seeing how the other person reacts. Are they going to step up to the plate? I have a feeling that they are. And the, and the thing is, is that understanding that all of this is based on your victim mentality of people walking away, abandonment, rejection. If I don't overgive, then this person either will, you know, you could have somebody that is like has, you know, um, kind of like an addiction or some issue, right? And you feel like if you 
pull back your energy, they're they're going to you know fall fall through the cracks. They're, they're, it's not going to be good. But then once again, asking yourself is that that is that a reason to overgive to the situation? It, you can still be there for them, and yet at the same time, also protect your own energy. You're making a de big decision. This is a crossroads decision. Am I going to allow myself to continue to overgive in the situation, or am I going to go have a little bit of fun and allow myself to have fun without feeling guilty? Right. This could be a a, a, a boss. It could be a, a family or a friend. <laughs> right. That kind of makes you feel guilty. If you're going to, you know, take a vacation or do something different or or do something with other people, right? It, you, it could be like a, a good friend and then you get invited to go do something with another group of people, right? And you're feeling like, well, I can't tell my best friend because they're going to be jealous or they're they're going to be upset that I'm doing something with these people over here. Have you ever had a friend like that? Yeah. That makes you feel guilty about perhaps the things that you have in your life or the other relationships, right? That's that's not healthy. Understanding, you know, that's not healthy. Um, okay, so let's see what we have here. Yeah, you're walking into a new world. And look at this. You, oh my goodness. Yeah, I feel like there's something coming to an end here. You're understanding that you're holding back your own energy of shining your love and your light. And this is, <laughs> look at this. You also had the page of wands here. Yeah, you kind of have all of this energy of new, fresh start. But I honestly feel, Gemini, this is more of a mindset. It's a, new things, new opportunities, new relationships are going to come onto your path when you have this more open, loving energy. But the first thing that has to happen is is you have to allow yourself, right? And Archangel Michael is here. Allow yourself moderation and allowing yourself to not overgive in a certain situation so that you have the time and the energy. You have the world card twice, right? And it's kind of like this energy of walking into this world, spending some time perhaps um, thinking about <laughs> what it is that you would really and truly like to experience because I feel like, this person or this situation is just draining you so much that you really haven't allowed yourself to even go there, right? So let's take a look. Let's pull a soul truth card for you. And Gemini, I do do personal readings. So if you're interested, the link is in the description box below. I'd really be honored to do a reading for you. Am I on the right path? Yeah, sometimes we second guess what we are doing. We lose trust in the process and question if we are even on the right path. Know this, you are on the right path. Keep going, keep believing, keep remembering that you made a soul contract that you are currently fulfilling in every area of your life. Even if you can't see it, that doesn't mean that it's not real. Yes, and um, this uh, this one popped out too. What can I do to make a difference? Yeah, I feel like that's part of it is that this person or situation is holding you back perhaps from your life purpose. Understanding that pulling back your energy and getting more in your divine feminine energy, right? And you know, when it was saying you're on the right path, I feel like for once again, this energy of knowing for a while that you need to make a change in this in this situation or this relationship. It's been a little bit gnawing at you. But the thing is, is that there's an underlying emotion of, or, or first of all, there's underlying codependency in the situation. But there's also this underlying energy where you may be feeling like this person or this situation can't do without you but asking yourself why you feel like you have to be the glue the rescuer the fixer in the situation that is going to help you to heal the situation but also heal that mindset right so that you can move in this new direction you can have a healthier mindset and go towards more things that bring you pleasure um, in your life all right, Jim and I am going to leave it there. Um, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I really and truly love you. And I appreciate all of your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.